Scott Blanton getting ready to kick off for the Oklahoma Sooners. Back deep, Mike Adams, the guy they nicknamed the playmaker for Texas. Bill Brown joins in. He's dangerous. We saw a 53-yard return that he had against Syracuse, and then a big punt return for a touchdown. Adams with 4.38 speed. And the ball falls off the tee, so Blanton tees it back up. Just a gorgeous Saturday afternoon for a football game here at the Cotton Bowl. Well, the guys have been talking about a front coming through. The temperature dropping. Only 11 of 29 kicks have been returned against Blanton. And this one will not be returned. It's through the back part of the end zone, and the Texas Longhorns will start off on their own 20. Welcome everybody to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. We have Oklahoma against Texas in the Red River rivalry. I'm Mark Jones, along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins down on the sideline. We just have kicked the opening kickoff. Texas is receiving. They have the ball right now on their own 20-yard line. Shamer ends back to pass on first and 10, completes the pass to Mike Adams, his wide out at the 25-yard line. Here's a look at the starting quarterback, Shane Lorenz. Last week had an outstanding week, 13 of 24, three touchdowns, 193 yards. The back to the receivers, a great pair of receivers. Pinckney and Adams, extremely dangerous. Look out for them. Adams, who just caught that pass, a gain of four. And on the offensive line, Troy Reamer, John Elmore, Trent Elliott, Dan Meehan, and Blake Brockermeyer, one of the best in the Southwest Conference. Second down, six to go. Jackson. Curtis Jackson, close to the first down. Let's take a look at this Oklahoma defense for you now. A tackle made by Audrey Beavers on that play up front. Allen, Korea, and Campbell. Beavers is the leader of the linebacking crew. Just one sack, though, so far this year, and in the defensive secondary. Shankle and Johnson on the corners to safeties Anderson and Larry Bush. Was enough for the first down. They moved the chains. This game always huge between Oklahoma and Texas. Texas having won four in a row. Gary Gibbs, the head coach at Oklahoma, having never beaten a long run. First down. Jackson again. Straight up the middle again of about six or seven yards. The crazy in on the tackle. Now Texas comes in one, two, and one. Oklahoma undefeated at 4-0, ranked 10 nationally. But this game has been the bane of them for the last four years. I don't care what anybody says. When you are the head coach at Oklahoma and you have yet to beat the Longhorns, there is pressure. Gibbs, his team went four, pardon me, five, four, and two last year. He's been involved in this game for over 20 years. Second down for Texas. Moran, play action. Overthrows his intended receiver at midfield, and it's incomplete. He tried to hit Mike Adams. Not a well-thrown ball. Morenz has had this problem all year. He's thrown four touchdowns, but he's had six interceptions. This was an ill-timed pass. He was thrown high and really should have been picked off. A lot of pressure on Morenz that time. Watch him set now. The pressure's already coming. Inside blitz. Forces him to throw high, release high. That came from Mike Coates, the linebacker, who's just getting healthy again. Coates coming off of a hamstring injury. That sets up third down and four for Texas here on their opening drive of the game. Three wideouts in. Lorenz to pass. He has Pinckney complete. And it'll be a first down at the 43-yard line. Pinckney just came into the ball game. He was not there. Now, the game story we feel, Texas wants to establish the run early, which they've done here in this drive, to take some of the pressure off Morenz. That also will take the double coverage off the wide receiver. Defensively, Oklahoma shut down the big plays, and they have to shut down Pinckney and Adams. Now, this is Pinckney at the bottom of your screen. He comes and just tries to run, sprint down, and come back for the ball. The cornerback's playing soft. He's got the first down. Pinckney, a tremendous combination of size and speed. 6'5", 234. Morenz looking to pass again. 
Justin McLemore, what a set of hands on him. An 18-yard pickup and another first down for Texas. Justin McLemore, 6'1", 178-pound junior. Take a look at this from the secondary. Again, there's plenty of time for Morenz. Green, number 46, and Shankle, number 8. The ball's thrown right between him. McLemore sneaks in and makes a terrific catch. McLemore, 6'1", 178-pound junior, came into the game with nine receptions. He was a high school quarterback. He's also a seven-foot high jumper and looked like it on that play. Well, this Texas offense extremely aggressive through the air. Lorenz, three for four now, 28 yards. You know, John Makovic said last year, this game was the most excited that he's ever been in any college football game. One of his biggest and most important experiences. You see, 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one at Texas. He wants, he needs these young guys to catch on, pick up the level of play a little bit, be more consistent. Got a good drive here. He's got to come away with some points early. He's team heavily underdog in this game. Falls on the 36-yard line. Brown and Jackson in the offset on What a counter play here. That's Jackson down to the 33-yard line. I'll say it again. Jackson Brown, great rhythm. <laughs> Talk about the record books. So it shows you how far back this goes. 87 times these two teams have met. Dating back to 1900. Texas with the overall lead. You know, only four times in the last 25 years that one of these two clubs not been unbeaten when they met here in this game. Third down and four. No wide receivers for Texas. Morales out of the backfield at the 32-yard line. It's complete to Jackson. He was tackled by Mike Coates. Coates very busy in the early going here. All right, it brings up fourth down and two. Morenz is staying on the field. Already, Oklahoma has changed his defense. Now, Texas will make some switches, but Morenz stays on him. They're going for it. John Makovic, extremely aggressive here in the early going. Well, he knows coming out of it. He's got good field position, even if he doesn't get it. It's a good call. Close to the 30. Gonna try to draw him off sides is what he's gonna do. The toss. He may have gotten the forward surge at the end of the run. No, he's not gonna make it, Mark. He's gonna come up short. Oklahoma held. Reamer, Elmore, Elliott, Neal, Blackermeyer, the front. That Texas, watch the surge they try to get, but Oklahoma steps him right up. Linebackers aren't taken out of there. Roderick Walker didn't make it. David Campbell, I'll tell you, number 59 right there, the right defensive end, really played that well. So Oklahoma takes over on the 30-yard line. 10-10 to go in the first quarter, just underway here at the top. Goal. Come to the pass. Has a man open. That was number one, Albert Hall, but he threw it behind him. We talked about his injury, his hip injury suffered earlier in the week. Gundy is the all-time leader in total offense at Oklahoma. The hip injury occurred in practice on Tuesday. No significant practice time since. Allen Chandler, the backs. Penny Warren and Brady, the tight end. Brady with the most receptions on the team. The offensive line, one of the most improved parts of the squad. Cavill, Roberson, Langston, Overton, and Harry Stamps. Second down and ten. Gundy working out of the shotgun this time. Has a man open and overthrows him. Corey Warren, the intended receiver. Covered by Joey Ellis. Their best cover down. Let's set this Texas defense for you now. Storman Norman Watkins, number one. He came on late last year and is still improving. He's joined by Baskin, Stoney Clark, and Tony Bracken. The linebackers led by Winfred Tubbs, an All-American candidate. He's been slowed down by a hand injury there. And in the secondary, Joey Ellis, as I mentioned, the best cover guy. Paul Malone, the strong safety, a hard hitter, Chris Carter, and Pascal White. 
three wide receivers and on third down and ten for Oklahoma. Play action. Gundy has a man open and a nice catch at midfield by Albert Hall, who extended himself for a 23-yard pickup. Downstairs now to Dean Blood. Oklahoma has two major concerns today. 28 players came down with food poisoning in the trip back from last Saturday's game at Iowa State. A bigger concern right now, though, is the health of Cale Gundy. He went down in practice on Tuesday when he slipped and he pulled muscles in his hip. Now, he, Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator, told me just a few minutes ago he didn't even know if he's going to play. He has started a restricted offense, take away the option, and a lot of shotgun. Back to you guys. All right, so far, thanks a lot, but he hasn't had a chance to run or hasn't had to run. Be watching his mobility throughout the course of the afternoon, and here they go, looking up top. Albert Hall wide open, and he's overthrown. You know what's happening on these passes, Mark, is the fact that the wind is to his back, and it's actually making the ball sail a little bit. That's the third pass out of four we've actually seen take off, and that's because the wind is at his back. Very good point. The wind is blowing from our left to right, the same direction that Oklahoma's going in right now. Plays well set up the flea flicker. They get it back to Gundy at this point. The safety's already been sucked up. Then the pass, and you can see here that he's already clear. Paul is already clear in the second goal. The ball is just over the And again, I really feel that that's the wind behind him taking up and selling on him. Offensive coordinator Watson Brown pulling out some of the trips already. James Allen right up the middle. Some real estate and is marked down in fumbles. They're going to say he was down. I don't think he was. The officials are still talking over this. Say it's Oklahoma ball still. Well, I don't know. They're saying his knee touched. An 11 yard pickup by James Allen. He was actually crawling on all fours. Take another look at this. We'll see what happens. Pick up the end of the play. Now watch, he's stumbling here. He's trying to stay up on all fours. His knee hit? No. That's a fumble and a bad call. Van Malone got the fumble. It should be Texas football. Obviously, the officials, Tim, thought that he was down, that his knee hit before he coughed it up. First down and 10. 9.02 to play in the first quarter. Oklahoma on its opening possession. Allen. Allen trying to run off tackle to the right side over Harry Stamps. He's tackled by Winford Tubbs and Chris Rapp. Interesting that both clubs offensively have had great penetration now on the other side of the field. Sets up second down and eight. Allen coming into the game as the team's leading rusher. It's over 289 yards. The first freshman to start a tailback in Oklahoma history. First true freshman. This is to protect Gundy right here. Out of the shotgun, how often have you seen Oklahoma do that? Not much. As a man open, that's his tight end, the Ricky Brady completed the 24-yard line. He's a big target at 6'4", 243. Tackled by Tubbs. We were talking about James Allen, the starter. Here's a look at how his yardage would be prorated throughout the course of the season and how he stacks up against other freshman runners in Oklahoma history. Yeah, that's projected through 11 games. There's no question he's a talent. He was the highest rated nation's uh, running back coming out of high school. Got the starting job with Jeff Frazier went down in the season with a knee injury. First down and 10, back side of the eye. This is Allen. Making a nice move all the way down to the 13-yard line. The freshman picking up 11 yards. We talked about Winford Tubbs at the beginning of the broadcast. He's the prototype middle linebacker, size, speed, and bad intentions. Here he is, number 44, fights off the block, gets out and makes the tackle, but not before they move the chains. There's no question Texas defense has really struggled this year. Right 104th out of 106 Division one of schools. Right now, having a very tough time stopping the run of Oklahoma. With a 495 yards per game. 7.35 to play in the first quarter. First and 10. Chandler and Allen out of the eye. This is Allen again. Slipping and falling forward down to the seven yard line. This is offensive coordinator Watson Brown. Now he's new to Oklahoma this year, but he's had head coaching experience with Cincinnati, Rice, Vanderbilt. He signals in the play to Kale Gundy. Look at this. 
All right, now here's the play. Basically, that's the formation. Last week against Iowa State, he called the formation. Kale would go in the huddle like this. They break the huddle, come up to the line. Then he'd look over, and by that time, Watson Brown had read the defense and then called the play off again. Not your average bump or steal sign. Up and down. More in motion to the top of your screen. Allen. Tried to get to the corner, was forced inside and tackled by Tony Bracken, so it'll be third down now for Oklahoma. Good strong play by Brackens that time. Played it inside out, fought the blocker off, and made the tackle. Kind of fun to watch this Oklahoma offense, Tim. Very unpredictable, a lot of motion. Well, the Sooners aren't as dependent on one person anymore. Kale doesn't have to carry the whole load. It's made Oklahoma much more successful. I mean, they emphasize the tailback, the fullback. Everybody's involved in the offensive scheme now. Watson Brown's Mississippi State teams with Jackie Farrell have defeated Texas in 91 and 92. Trying to bring that success to Oklahoma. On the toss, Allen spinning and stopped at the five-yard line. Gang tackled, led by Chris Rapp. A little jump talk going on down there, too. Yeah, you're going to get that anytime you have a rivalry. But again, Chris Rapp, he's a veteran, proven veteran, 50-year senior. He's experienced, maintained his composure. Again, he fought off the block, played it inside out, and made the stop. So it's a fourth and short for Oklahoma. In comes Scott Blanton to attempt the field goal. He's six for eight field goals. He had 18 to 20 last year. This one team coming from 22 yards out. Coming out of the hold of Joey Alfred. And Oklahoma takes a 3 to nothing lead in the 88th edition of the Red River War. The Sooners undefeated and hope to keep it that way. Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. A look at the scoring drive by Oklahoma. 12 plays, 65 yards capped by that Scott Blanton field goal from 22 yards out. Watch this, Blanton's had only 11 of 30 kicks returned this year. Back Plus deep. he's got the wind at his back, Mark. Well, the opening kickoff sailed through the end zone, and this one does the same. Mike Adams watches it go through the end zone, and Texas will start off on its own 20 when we come back. So uptight, isn't he? He's got to learn how to relax. Well, okay. he had a late night on the West End last night. <laughs> All right, Texas with the ball. First down and 10 from their own 20. Brown and Jackson in the backfield. 5.28 to go in the first period. Oklahoma leads by three. The toss. Look out. Curtis Jackson up to the 27-yard line. They get a gain of seven on that one. Downstairs now to Dean Blevins. Dean? It's commercial for grass. Every field ought to have grass like this. This is gorgeous. This is similar to the Rose Bowl. This was put down for the World Cup that's coming next summer. The Texas Stadium had grass until 1970. Texas beat Notre Dame for the national championship, and they put AstroTurf down, but they've gone to this. It's 419 tip. Reminds me of the Rose Bowl floor. Hey, Dean, something else, too, Dean, is both these clubs play on artificial surface, so it's unique to them. As long as you don't have to cut it. Fine with me. Second down and two. Just let Bebo graze. Takes in motion to tight end. Lorenz on the slant. Incomplete at the 44-yard line. A lot of contact, but no flag. He tried to hit Mike Adams. So far, I think the difference in this ball game is the heavy wind. You can see it. Texas has been going into it in the first quarter. They were down far enough for Shreddy to try a 47-yard field goal. Instead, they didn't like the wind factor, so they went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. Oklahoma went with the wind at its back, got the field goal, and now leads 3-0. 4.35 to play in the first quarter. Ball in the 28. Third down and two. Four wideouts in for Texas. The inside handoff to Phil Brown. Got the first. And he got the first down. Phil Brown coming off a very... Productive week last week, had 184 yards rushing against Rice. He's the team's leading rusher. It was stopped by Aubrey Beavers. 
As we said earlier, Texas winners of the last four meetings against Oklahoma. First and ten. Wren's quick three-step drop complete to Mike Adams, who got rocked by Darius Johnson. Hello. Want to congratulate Bobby Bowden. Finally did it. Beat Miami 28 to 10 as the Seminoles roll on. Really dictated that game from the outset. And don't think for a minute that that doesn't help Charlie Ward's Heisman hopes. Ward, really one of the more fluid athletes and quarterbacks I've ever seen. Saw Notre Dame's winning big, which reminds me of the big contest coming up in November out in South Bend between Notre Dame and Florida State. Second down and five for Texas. They trail three to nothing. Counter, and it's stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Jackson stopped up by Beavers and Paul Oates. I'm going to tell you something. Beavers sets the standard for this entire defense. Watch number 56. The play goes away from him purposely. They're trying to run away from him. He chases it down from the backside. He's got great speed. He's got 4% body fat. He bench presses 400 pounds. Tell you what, he's a heck of a player. 4% body fat. Yes, sir. Huh? One of the best linebackers in the United States. Third down and six. Lorenz pumps once. And he's sacked at the 28-yard line. Tyrell Peters from his inside linebacking spot making the sack. That's a covered sack. Morenz could not ask for more time. He had more time than he ever wanted. So much time, I think he got confused. A loss of six on the sack. And Texas will have to punt. In comes Dwayne Vasek, a former defensive lineman. And Darius Johnson is standing on his own 32-yard line for Oklahoma. Six punt goes down to the 34. Here's Johnson. Flags down, and Johnson up to the 41. This is going to be a penalty against Oklahoma. Block in the back. There's no question there was a clip on the play, so they'll move them back. Take away the good field position Oklahoma thought it would have. See that so many times. In the back. On the return. On the, on the, on the return. Hey. Okay, we got, we got procedure on the Came offense out. back here. Time out. Okay. No, no. <laughs> They're talking about procedure, so that might take place before the block in the back. I think that's what he's telling the referee. It was a 37-yard punt and seven on the return by Johnson. Well, again, he's kicking into the wind. Here's the call. We got procedure on the offense. We either got an illegal push on the offense. That's Steve Yusek, the referee who makes that call. The officiating crew out of the Big Eight today. Such a unique situation here in the Cotton Bowl. The tickets are split right down the middle between the two schools. So you have half the stadium for Oklahoma and the other half, of course, for Texas. You know, there's a lot of talk now about moving this game home and away and getting it out of Dallas, which I think would be a tragedy because it's been played here and it's gained so much tradition here and had success here. We got procedure on the offense. Decline. We got an illegal push in the back on the offense. Ten-yard penalty. First down. Boy, I tell you what, they called that on the offense, and I watched it right in front of our booth. Oklahoma was guilty of two pushes in the back. Well, whatever the case, Oklahoma gets great field possession out of this with the ball on Texas's side of midfield right at the 49-yard line. 2.08 remaining in the first period. The Sooners with a 3 to nothing lead. We're going to take a break and come right back. Ball on ABC Sports brought to you by the new Chevy S-Series line of trucks. So new from the inside out, everything else is history. 
and coast deodorant soap. That crisp, invigorating scent makes coast the eye opener. And RCA changing entertainment again. And Allied Signals Autolite spark plugs guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins. It's three to nothing for the Oklahoma Sooners here at the Cotton Bowl. We have two minutes and eight seconds to go in the first period. Three wide receivers in for Oklahoma on first and ten. Gundy back to the far side of the field. And Juwan Penny is tackled immediately by Joey Ellis. Down to the field now and Dean. Guys, an injury update on the OU sideline. Russell Allen, the fine defensive lineman, has gone into the locker room. He has a sprained knee. They will check it out. And Oklahoma has uh, Robert Wren also, a, a down lineman, has a gash forearm. He will come back. It's significant because Oklahoma has Cedric Jones, their best down lineman perhaps, did not suit up today because of a knee problem. Things a little thin for the Sooners. What a tough week. A food poisoning situation. Injuries. Second down and 16. Gundy on the option now throws it. And it's incomplete intended for his tight end, Ricky Brady. Tim, what about some of the keys for Oklahoma to be successful today? Well, I think Watson Brown would like to spread the field, spread that Texas defense as wide as he can, and get K.L. Gundy into a rhythm. He hasn't really practiced since Tuesday. They want to get him some success early. Defensively, I think uh, the defensive line of Texas defense has to keep the people off the offensive line, off of Tubbs, so he can move to the football. Consequently, they got to keep heat on K.L. Gundy. And what? Watson Brown spread that last play. It looked like the option it was an option pass designed that way. You don't think of Gundy as an option quarterback, but he does have fairly good mobility when he's healthy. Four wide receivers in. And he's using that mobility here, and he goes down at the 42. Sacked by Tony Brackens. talked about keeping the heat on Kale Gundy. Don't let him get into that rhythm if you're on Texas defense. They do it this time. They bring pressure from the perimeter and then force the middle with a game. Watch this now. Kale goes back. He's had pretty good time. He's working out of the shotgun so he doesn't have to drop back. But again, good push from both sides on the perimeter. They force him back inside to the pursuit. Blanton punting. And this is Mike Adams. Going to get a chance to return it at the 19. Adams stopped up at the 25. A 40-yard punt and five on the return on a sunny afternoon in Dallas. the first Saturday of the Texas State Fair and that only means one thing Oklahoma against Texas three to nothing with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter Texas with the ball first down and 10 the ball in their own 25 yard line Brown and Jackson lining up out of the eye they run it to the wide side of the field this is Jackson cutting it up to the 27 back to New York and John Saunders Mark, the Michigan State Spartans have hit quickly against the Wolverines. Bryce Abrams from three yards out 
Stoyanovic also has a 47-yard field goal. They lead 10-0. Meantime, Louisville and West Virginia, Sauerbrunn with another field goal. They lead by two. Mark. All right, right here it's three to nothing. Jeff Brom, a really exciting quarterback for Louisville. If you hadn't had a chance to see him play. And the clock winding down in the first quarter. So the first quarter of the 88th edition of this battle is in the books. Oklahoma leads Texas three to nothing. Baron, if you want some tickets for that ride, folks, Tim Brandt still got some coupons. I couldn't get you off of it last night, Mark. No wonder you're sick today. <laughs> Just a great scene here on the Texas State Fairgrounds. Wise decision, I think, on Makovic's part not to run that last play. He wants to win at his back as much as possible. Also, wants to shorten the game. Now he has the wind at his back. They hand it off to Phil Brown, and Brown's got some room. Does he ever? Phil Brown pushed out of bounds at midfield to the 49-yard line. A pickup of 24 yards and a first down for the Horns. Watch the block by Pickney, number 80. Here comes Jackson. Brown gets to the outside. Pickney throws the block. Bingo. Nicely done. Makes Makovic's decision to not run the play going the other way until the quarter ends. Even that much better. They trail three to nothing. It's their first series of the second quarter. Lorenz to pass. Over the middle complete. That's Mike Adams. Adams so dangerous after he catches the ball. And a first down after a pickup of 16 yards. Oh, did Pinkney get a block? And then he talked to the crowd to let everybody know he got it. Johnson finally made the tackle, but this play's well designed. Boy, Morenz is on fire. He's now six for eight, 51 yards. Here he goes to Adams. He's got good speed. Watch the right hand. Here comes Pinkney. Bam! Throws the block, opens it up. Johnson finally runs him out of bounds. And Pinkney turned to the crowd and said, that's right, I'm bad. <laughs> Ring my bell, Lavelle Pinkney. <laughs> First down and 10. Crawford the fullback. This is Holmes bouncing it outside and down to the 28-yard line. A look at the first quarter statistics, Tim. Uh, the time of possession in favor of Texas, but not on the scoreboard. No, but if you come down both ledgers, you'll see that everything is pretty well even. Both teams getting balanced attacks. As a matter of fact, look at Oklahoma, 29 running plays, 26 passing plays. I think the difference thus far has been the win factor. Oklahoma had it in the first quarter, had it at their backs, they kicked the field goal. Texas was into the win, opted not to kick it, thus the difference, three points. Now this is the biggest quarter of the year for Oklahoma. They've outscored opponents 58 to seven, but they'll be going into the win. Lorenz to pass. It's knocked out of his hands as he threw it, and it's incomplete. Backside pressure that time. Paul Oates, yep. the sophomore, came clean, nobody picked him up. They're bringing him from the outside. Now watch, he just kind of runs by Bradley and gets the sack. Well, you know, Morenz never saw him coming either. Look, his arm was going forward. Some thought it was a fumble. It's not even close. That's a big time play, though, by young sophomore Paul Oates. Gets the sack, or actually not the sack, but the hurry. Crucial third and four here. The inside handoff flags down. That's Phil Brown. Brown has the first down, but we have to see what this flag's about. It was dropped at the 24. They're going to bring it back. I think it's movement against Texas. Larry Bush made the tackle on Brown. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Not what John Makovic wanted to see. So they'll push it back. Ball start, offense, repeat third down. Now Joe Phillips, number 70. Watch him right there and watch Brookermeyer, number 78. The two guys right on the right side of the line. Now here comes the snap. So they move 
just before the ball is snapped. But they're going on the center flinch. As soon as Elliott flinched to get that ball back in the shotgun, they moved. And the referee and the, the linesman, the umpire, saw that ball. They didn't see it clear as butt in time. Or even though he flinched and was going through the motion, they called him for illegal motion. False start. Close call. Three wide receivers in. Pinckney split to the top of your screen. Lorenz downfield for McLemore, incomplete at the 12. He was covered closely that time by Darius Johnson. Lorenz seems like he's favoring his hand there. Might have been shaking up a touch on that play. Scott Sheretti now coming in to attempt a field goal for Texas. Sheretti is 5 of 7 on the season. All Southwest Conference in 92. Yeah, but this will be a 49-yarder. He hit a 53-yarder against Rice last week, so it is within his range, and he has the wind at his back now. The lefty from 49. Out of the hold of Chad Lucas, the backup quarterback. He missed it. He hooked it to the right. I think any time you have a long field goal, you try to put a little extra oomph into it, just like the golf game. You'll pull it. He did. Catch the Shooting Stars Saturday, October 30th on Pay-Per-View. Undefeated Michael Carbajal puts his IBF and WBC light flyweight championship on the line against Domingo Sosa. Oscar De La Hoya continues his climb in the junior lightweight division. Plus, veteran Lupe Aquino squares off against Verno Phillips for the super welterweight crown. See it live on pay-per-view. Call your local cable operator. into our ABC College Football time machine. The 1968 OU Texas game, the game that made the wishbone famous. Texas used the revolutionary offense to secure a 28 to 22 come from behind win on this late touchdown. Ironically, OU assistant coach at the time, Barry Switzer then took that offense and well, they didn't invent it, but Oklahoma pretty much perfected it. But Texas did win that game 28 to 22. Right here on first and ten, it's three to nothing Oklahoma after that missed field goal by Scott Sheretti. Downstairs now to Dean Blevins with a guest. Well, guys, James Street, the quarterback that game right here. James, a heck of a quarterback. 20 and 0 is as big as your is your career at Texas. Uh, what are your memories? Well, I tell you what, it brings back a lot of good memories. Of course, Dean, that was a long time ago. Uh, come this OU game, it, it uh, brings a lot of memories back also. James wants to make sure and say hello to his five boys back in Austin. He's in the insurance business, guys. All right. He's going to need it with five boys. <laughs> I can talk from experience. Hey, that was a nice tackle on the last play by Tubbs, too. Texas. This game's so important in so many different ways. Second down. Gundy to throw. Incomplete and picked off. Intercepted. Intercepted at midfield by Jason Reeves. Stepped right in front of the tight end, Ricky Brady, and just ripped the ball out of his arms. It started with Winfred Tubbs, 44. He puts pretty good pressure up the middle. Now here comes Reeves, the linebacker on the strong side. 
reads it out of the zone, steps in front of the receiver, Brady, and picks it off nicely. Boy, Jason Reeves, 6'3", 202-pounder, but he runs like a back. He was moved from defensive end to linebacker, and he's flourished. Now, Tim, again, Texas with fantastic field position here. The ball at midfield. They've moved the ball well, but they haven't been able to cash anything onto the scoreboard. 12.36 to play in the first half. A trips left formation by the Longhorns. Morenz on the waggle. Has a man wide open at the 45. That's Jimmy Hakes and back downstairs. Dean? We're back down with James. And James, that was the second of 30 straight wins out of the wishbone for Texas. The game's changed a lot. It sure has. Uh, you know, Dean, back in those days, once you passed the 50-yard line, you had four downs to work with. Nowadays, they come out throwing on first down. I, Coach Roll and I both uh, die every time we see them on third and two, and, uh, and they've got back out there and throw a long pass. Those days, we just uh, lined up and ran the wishbone. This guy looks young enough and uh, good enough to still play, guys. <laughs> the age of special specialization in football now. Really has changed a lot. Second down and four. Brown and Jackson in the backfield. Wren's looking to pass all kinds of time. A dangerous throw into traffic, and it's almost picked off. He was watching Hakes the whole time. Hakes had done a little button hook, but he was double coverage. And as Morenz rolled right, he says, hey, release, go, 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 and tried to lead him out there. Just a, as you said, a dangerous pass. Coates and Darius Johnson in on the coverage that time. Good to see Coates, 41, back in the lineup. You know, he's been out with a hamstring pull. He certainly compliments the beef. And uh, 13 tackles against Texas last year in this game. He was the Big A player of the week, so he loved to play against the Longhorns. And the Bees glad to have him back. Don't you dare call him Wally, though. Third down and four. The flanker screen for Mike Adams, and Adams may have seen a defender coming to lower the boon on him, Tremaine Green. Adams didn't want to catch that ball, Tim. Oh, absolutely not. He became gumshoes. I mean, his, he got those alligator arms. They pulled back in to protect himself from the hit. Wayne Vasek into punt now for Texas. He's standing on his own 42. And Darius Johnson is back on his own 10 for Oklahoma. Vasek, a former defensive lineman, came to Coach Makovic last year and said, hey, I want to punt. So Coach said, go ahead. It's easier than getting hit all the time. Biggest punter in the country. And he fumbles it. The punt rolls down to the 15 and now the 13. Vasek was hit afterwards, but the fumbled snap and there's no flag. A 30-yard punt. In golf, we say that is a come-out shot. Everything come out okay. I mean, this is a great miss. Watch it. Takes his eye off it, hits him in the face mask. Now watch this. He gets it off just in time. That's a legal hit. Once the ball hits the ground, that punter's... He's full game. Go after him right now. Try to give him a good lick. Bang! But that's a great play to get that punt off. And I just finished saying that it was easier being a punter and not getting hit like you do on defense. Well, when you start getting hit as a punter, there's nowhere else to go, is there? Looking at his hands. I wonder if he has a problem with his hands down on the sideline. Ball went right through him. First down and 10. Here's James Allen, the freshman, out to the 15. Tonight on ABC, Martin Short and Nick Nolte star in the comedy that never runs out of steam. Three fugitives on ABC's Saturday Night Movie. Then Mike Connors guests on The Commish all tonight on ABC. Working on Vasek's hands there. He's reaching into his eyes as well. well. They checked his hands. Now they say, well, your hands are okay. Let's see what's in your eyes. Second down and seven back on the field. Point of the ball might have hit him in the eye. The pitch on the option. Allen makes a nice move and has the first down. He stepped out of bounds at the 25. And they throw a flag for a late hit out of bounds. Well, I don't know about that. That was just good hustle. Robert Reed. this on Reed. Watch the end of this. Watch number 40. Boom. Makes contact in. Hot tail. He made that contact still in play. Personal foul. It may have been on Tubbs. Defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. It may have been on Tubbs, Tim. 
He came in after Reeves. All right, let's take another look at it then. There's 40. All right, he's still in bounds. That's close. That's still close. Spoken like a true former defensive player. <laughs> yeah, I don't care what kind of color jersey you have. I love aggressive football on defense. That's what these guys are playing. Oklahoma's playing it too. Let them go. And of course, you have the added factor of the emotion in this game. Gary Gibbs played in this game. He's been on the coaching staff 19 years at Oklahoma. And this is his 50th game as head coach. Only four other Oklahoma coaches have coached that many games. Yeah, Gary's taken this program out of some of its toughest times and has brought it back to prominence. Now ranked 10th in the country and unbeaten. First down and 10 and a whistle down on the field. Ball start. You know, Tim, we talked about this game being important. Dead ball, offside, lined up in a neutral zone, offense, five-yard penalty. This game is so important in so many ways, i.e. recruiting. Both these schools recruit pretty much from the same fertile recruiting grounds. They sure do. A lot of these kids come from Texas, even on Oklahoma's club. The, the, probably the, the most recruited areas now are Florida, Texas, and Pennsylvania. And then comes California. A lot of speed down here. 11.24 to play in the first half. Oklahoma, first and 15. Gundy hands it off. That's Dwayne Chandler. Gain of about four. Downstairs now to Dean. Guys, I spoke with Cale Gundy after la Oklahoma's last offensive series. He told me he was 110%. That was a clear signal to me that he's nowhere close to that. He's doing the best he can, but I think it's obvious when they do not run much option that he's not ready to run it. And guys, Watson Brown told me they had to take three of their eight running plays out for this ball game because Gundy can't run. Usually they depend on him for big plays. They'll have to look for it elsewhere for the most part. Yeah, and flexibility is such a big key to that Oklahoma offense. It's one of the great cliches of all time. They're in a 110% coach. Second down and 10. Here's the option. The pitch is to Moore. Gerald Moore with the first down, cutting up field nicely. We were talking about recruiting. Take a look at this. 99 of the 108 players are from Texas on the Longhorn squad, none from Oklahoma. Now look at the Sooners. 29 guys are from Oklahoma, but 41 are from the state of Texas playing today wearing in white jerseys. You know, Tim, when Earl Campbell was deciding where to go to college, it came down to Oklahoma or Texas. Of course, he went to Texas. And Barry Switzer had some interesting comments about that recruiting process. I'll continue that after this play. First down and 10 with 10.20 to play in the first half. P.J. Mills in motion. This is Moore again. Moore with about seven yards down to the 42, tackled by Norman Watkins. Big penetration by Tubbs to get there, but he couldn't hold on to the tackler. Now watch 44, Tubbs, as we go to the replay. Immediate read. Tucks that tail, goes to it without hesitation, but can't wrap up. Consequently, Moore spins out of there and picks up good yardage. Tubbs flying around this afternoon. Second down and three. The toss to Moore. Moore down to the 41. Tackled by Joey Ellis, who provided support from his corner spot that time and Boy, went I for tell Tubbs. You, Tubbs got there too. But Gerald Moore showing a lot of speed. This guy's only 5'10, but he's 230 pounds. Got that low center of gravity. Got an elusive slashing style. That's, that's so many good running backs here in Oklahoma, Tim. He's got three carries, 19 yards. They say at Oklahoma, they make holes side to side, not up and down, so it doesn't matter how tall you are. Third down and two, full house backfield. Chandor, Collier, and Allen. The toss to Allen. And he's right near the first down marker. 
Joey Ellis made the tackle that time. Yeah, but watch Ellis. Ellis really took a lick at the end of this play. He's not getting up either. They rule it a first down. Takes the quarterback. Where's the pitch man? Ellis has to come up right now and support. He does, but he gets run over by Allen. I mean, they met two yards before the first down markers, and Allen just took him back to the end of the chain. And what about the shot that Van Malone put on quarterback Cale Gundy? Well, that's his assignment, is to come down and take the quarterback. We're going to take a timeout and come right back. Joey Ellis of Texas got up and jogged off the field under his own power. Bryant Westbrook comes into the game at the right cornerback spot, and Pascal Wadi shifts over to Ellis's spot now. Allen just ran over Ellis. That was a slobber knocker. Here's Collier plowing his way forward. He's down to the 32. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. It's one of the great things of the games, the rivalries like Oklahoma and Texas. I mean, these two teams are going after each other. They are extremely physical. And every hit, rattling the fillings and putting bubbles in your nostrils. <laughs> Even bigger ones on this one. Second down and five. Moore on the counter. Gerald Moore down to the 19-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Van Malone, but a pickup of 13 yards for the freshman. Moore showing a great deal of speed, but watch the push up front. It's the old draw play. Get a good block, cutoff block from Robert Reed. That put him into the secondary. He broke two tackles before Van Malone could finally knock him out. Well, I tell you what, Moore's having a heck of a quarter here. Says he's a 30 pounds showing great explosion. It says he's 5'10, Tim, but there's no way that he looks that tall. First down to 10. Ball to 19. Moore again. Give me more. Moore down to the eight-yard line, tackled by Chris Carter. You want some more? You got some more. Great cutoff block by Cavill that time, 63. been a long line of small but very successful productive runners at Oklahoma guys like Joe Washington Greg Pruitt they weren't big but they could play Collier and Moore lining up out of the eye on second and one here he is again this time Collier back at the 10-yard line by Tubbs I love Tubbs he is some kind of player 
You know, he's the cousin of Reggie Barnes, who was a linebacker at Oklahoma. This guy played football, uh, fullback his freshman year. Look at this. Here comes, bam, over the top. Grab the shoulder pads and pull him down. 239 pounds, almost pulled his head off. Psychology major. I'll tell you what, he's psyching him out right here. God knows the difference between come here and sick him. 240 pounds. He's 6'5". But regardless, it's an Oklahoma first down in spite of the good play by Tubbs. We should mention, Tim, that Tubbs suffered earlier in the season from a freak accident, put his hand through a pane of glass, and almost severed some tendons. And he's been slow in coming back from that. He still has them wrapped up quite a bit. He's been unable to use his hands the first couple of games back. Freed him up a little bit more last week, and he got an interception. You can see how they're, they're taped heavily. Six and a half minutes to play in the first half. Oklahoma threatening on first and goal. Moore trying to get to the corner. Moore with the touchdown. football somebody has to take the dive man the quarterback and the pitch man watch how fast Gundy gets rid of this ball then here comes more they get the good push to the outside he cuts back against pursuit breaks a tackle and then carries it in Reeves had him at the five and couldn't hold on to him Blanton with the extra point attempt trying to make it 10 to nothing but Moore has really shown us something here in the second quarter Gerald Gundy. Gundy unloads it, goes to the ground. He had to pitch it quickly. He did. Touchdown OU. Oklahoma scoring drive, 12 plays, 87 yards, 544 on the clock, and they lead 10-0. Told you Oklahoma has outscored opponents 58-7 in this quarter. Out of those 12 plays, all were runs. Mike Adams can get a chance to return this, but it bounces into the end zone, and Texas will start off on its own 20-yard line. Tomorrow night on ABC, Joanna Kearns and Tim Matheson star in the world premiere movie, Shameful Secrets. It's the Sunday night movie, tomorrow night at 9, 8 central on ABC. Texas has had opportunities, has moved the football quite well against Oklahoma. At this point in the ball game, but no points. Penetrated deeply twice. Better score now, or this could be a long afternoon. And Shane Moran seems to be doing a good job passing the ball and throwing the ball, making some good reads, but they haven't been able to put any points on the board. Play action, Moran's to pass. Has a man open, and a first down to pass complete to Justin McLemore, a pickup of 16. McLemore really, Tim, an underrated talent. He is, but you know what? He doesn't look fast. He's certainly not big. But he knows how to separate from the defenders, and if they're in his zone, he knows how to find the open areas. A seven-foot high jumper in high school. Not only that, but he ran the 400-meter hurdles. Who says white men can't jump? He obviously didn't see the movie. <laughs> you are so bad. <laughs> Six seventeen to play in the first half. McLemore with a big week last week against Rice. Moran's going to pass again. Morant rocked at the 35. And look who it is. The Bees. When Morenz comes to, his clothes are going to be out of style. What a hit. Beavers is being pushed for All-American, and he's trying to live up to that. They've got postcards out on him. Here comes the Beav. Tuck the tail, sky the eyes, and put the helmet right under the chin of the ball carrier. You know what that postcard said? Wish you were here, Shay. Weather's fine. Wish you were beautiful. <laughs> Aubrey Beavers. Made four tackles already this afternoon. Second down and 12 after that loss of two. I guarantee you, Morenz will be looking for 56 the rest of the afternoon. He'll have his head on the swivel. The counter. Jackson straight up the middle out to the 46-yard line. Close to the first down. Tackled by John Anderson and Larry Bush. All right, what do you do? You locate 56. He's the playmaker. Let's seal him off right now. There he is. Seal him off. Boom. They, they pull the guard. They bring him over. They seal him off. And Jackson takes it right up for the big game. Nicely done. 
it was a concern of this Texas staff team to get that running game on track, too. Gene Dahlquist was looking forward to getting that accomplished. They trail 10 to nothing. Adams in motion. Handed off to Holmes. And Holmes has the first down out at the 50-yard line. Anthony Holmes, 14 rushes for a total of 86 yards last week and a couple of touchdowns for Texas against Rice. He actually misread a block that time. He went outside instead of inside and he ran right into the pursuit of Coates. Crawford and Holmes come out of the game. Brown and Jackson check back in. First down and 10 with 4.15 to play in the first half. Lorenz, play action, looking up top. Looking for Adams, and it's incomplete at the seven. There again, Tim, an overthrown ball going left to right on the field. Well, they've set up the run and established that. That's what they wanted to do. That was the game plan, to take the pressure off Morantz and also take double coverage off Pinckney and Adams. Pinckney's had one catch for six yards. Adams, three for 25. They've been open several other times and haven't been hit. If you're Lavelle Pinckney, or even Mike Adams to a certain extent, you have to be a little frustrated in that you're not getting the ball as much as you want to. Well, they're going after a balanced attack. They certainly have that. 15 runs, 15 passes. But I agree. When you have weapons like those two guys, you've got to go to them. Pinckney split to the top of your screen. And he catches this one. Pinckney tackled at the 45. William Shankle in on the stop. So just as we mentioned his name, he catches the pass. Pickney out of Washington, D.C. You know, Johnson and Shankle, the corners are playing so soft. Look, you can't even see them in this picture. They're giving up at least five to ten yards. That's how soft they're playing off of Pickney and respecting his speed and big play ability. Sets up third down and three. We talked about the balance of Texas. 15 rushes and 16 passes. Third and three right now. Lorenz under pressure, finds his receiver, Lavelle Pinckney, and a first down for the Longhorns. And Pinckney calls it himself. Hey, I'll tell you what, though. Again, isolate, come out, and look for Beavers. Identify him, top of the screen, here he comes. All right, let's release it quickly, right across the middle. Bang, get the pass there, let him go. Nice read by Morenz. And they're starting to get Pinkney and Adams involved in the ball game, like we said they had to. But see the pressure coming, just release. Still backpedaling when he threw that thing. He says, I've been hit by that guy once. I don't want to beave again. First down and 10. Three minutes to go in the first half. Two tight ends, single back set. Morenz going into the end zone. Incomplete. He tried to find Pinckney again, but good coverage that time by Shankel. See what they were doing that time? Jump ball, too. Pinckney 6'5". Shankel just barely six feet. He's about 5'10 and a half, 5'11". Trying to get up, put the ball up high, and let Pinckney go up after it. Looking for the mismatch. Look at that. Hey, watch this. Looks like Mutt and Jeff. <laughs> Look at Pinckney. He's just towering over him. Pinkney. Probably shouldn't have cut back inside. Pinkney, a guy that's really turned his life around in the last few years. Came out of bleak circumstances in Washington, D.C. Anacostia High School. I know it well. A counter tray. This is Brown. Trying to find the seam to no avail. Tackled at the 36-yard line by Tremaine Green. You know, Green will get credit for the tackle. But that play was made by Mike Coates, number 41. He took on the blocker, strung it out. There was nowhere to run, and let the pursuit come in and make the stop. Boy, that's a great play by that guy. He's just coming back from a hamstring. Talked about the big game he had last year against Texas. The problem with Texas so far this afternoon is that when they get down to this part of the Oklahoma field, they haven't been able to score. Third down and nine. The two for two on third down conversions on this drive, and it's incomplete. Intended for Pinckney, covered closely by the free safety, Malin Wesley. 
Pinkney thought that he may have been interfered with. Then he took Freeman and threw him to the ground. I think that's offensive as much as it is defensive. Both were bumping and grinding. And after he came back up, he took Freeman, the linebacker, threw him to the ground. Receivers aren't supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> In comes Scott Sheretti attempting a field goal from 52 yards out with the wind at his back. It would tie his long of the season. Lots of leg. And it's good. Sharetti equaling his long of 52 yards to finally put Texas on the scoreboard. No doubt about that one. Parents and Tell you how big this game is. Watch Shreddy after he kicks this thing. His reaction when he sees that he's hit it from 52 yards. Texas finally on the board. Yes, sir. Here we come. We're alive and well in Dallas. Oh, there it is. Look at the scoring drive. 11 plays, 45 yards, using up almost four and a half minutes on the clock. Shreddy, all Southwest Conference in 1992. Field goal is not exactly what they wanted. They wanted big points. They've been in the red zone now, or what I call the green zone, down in the money area. Three times come away with just three points. We've got two minutes to play here in the first half, and it's 10 to 3. Getting ready for Sheretti's kickoff. Back deep, Darius Johnson, number 42, and P.J. Mills, a speedster with 4-3 speed. Ready with the wind at his back. He's about five yards deep. And Mills thinks about it and then makes a good career decision. Takes the touchback. Downstairs now to Dean Blevins. Guys, spirits are noticeably up on the Texas sideline after that field goal. Number 27, defensive back Joey Ellis is talking to his uh, teammates saying, don't miss tackles as they did on the last Sooner drive. And they're talking about adjusting on the option. Gundy obviously is not ready to go keep it but they've been letting him pitch. I think you can look for that to be changed here in uh, what we have left of the first half and the second half. No injuries for Texas. I think P.J. Mills was teasing him. Watch this. Oh, I think I might. Oh, maybe not. Oh, maybe I will. Go. Hey, man, go for it. <laughs> give it to me if you're going to do that. There's Johnson saying, hey, go ahead and give it a shot. Gundy on play action first down. It looked like it may have been tipped at the line of scrimmage, and it falls short at the 35-yard line. You think the wind hadn't played a factor in this ball game? Oklahoma now with the football. With the wind, seven runs, seven passes. Going against the wind, 13 runs, one pass, and that was intercepted. Interesting statistic. 155 to play in the first half. Gary Gibbs 0 and 4 against Texas as a head coach. He's got a ball club now, though. 4 and 0, ranked 10th in the country. He's had two very good consecutive recruiting classes as well. Yeah, last year I think was a major disappointment for everybody involved. They thought they'd do better. They were just 5, 4, and 2. That was the worst since 1965. I think it shocked everybody, but he's got them going now. Yeah, 5, 4, and 2 at a program like Oklahoma. Kale had to call timeout. Play clock was down to 1. We're going to take a break, too. 3. Yeah, let's see. 
And I say that there is pressure involved when you don't beat those guys. Colorado, okay, Nebraska, all right. But if you don't beat Texas, man, I'm telling you, the folks out in Norman don't understand it. <laughs> yeah, if Gary Gibbs were to walk across the Red River, the headlines the next day would probably read, uh, Gibbs can't swim. I can't figure this out. Look at the grass now. They got new grass, real grass, finally on the Cotton Bowl. They got Bebo sitting down on artificial surface. The shuffle pass. That's Collier, and he's wrapped up at the 19-yard line. And a flag. May have been a face mask. Tubbs and Waddy in on the tackle that time. Got 146 to play in the first half. Well, that's a shame. It negates a nice defensive play by Robert Reed. Incidental face mask on a defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. I want you to watch number 40, how he plays off the block. Inside out, never loses that outside leverage. Makes the play, and all of a sudden, he gets Waddy, 26, coming in. and gets caught up on the helmet, and they call the face mask. And he had him wrapped up as well. Looked like he had the top of the helmet. But again, I'm trying to give the defender of it. Look at Bevo takes the artificial strip of turf there. Hey, don't give me that real grass stuff. <laughs> I only go to the real grass when I'm hungry. I sleep on the artificial stuff. <laughs> you better not try to eat that stuff, though. Gundy completed the 29 to Brady is tight end, and Brady pushes forward to the 32. Try to. Bebo try to eat that stuff, he's going to have the same problem the Oklahoma players have. Exactly. Well, coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, John Saunders will have scores and highlights from all of today's action. A very busy day in college football. And most of the action in the spotlight falling in Tallahassee, Florida State's Man first win Miami. in a long time over Miami. Really manhandled Miami. Charlie Ward, terrific game. Just picked them apart. You going to give him the Heisman Trophy yet? What do you think? I think it's still early. I think it's Charlie's to lose or win. Interesting that it didn't come down to Scott Bentley's toe. Didn't Interesting. have to kick a field goal. Interesting that even Florida State players were saying, we're going to make sure it doesn't come down to that kick. Right here, 123 to play in the first half. Oklahoma leading Texas 10 to 3. You know, I started talking earlier about the recruiting involved between Oklahoma and Texas and how they recruit the same players in the same area. Barry Switzer was recruiting Earl Campbell, and Campbell had narrowed his choices down to Oklahoma and Texas, and he said he went to bed at night praying for God to give him a sign of which school to choose. Switzer later said, if I'd known that, I'd just snuck under his bed and sang Boomer Sooner all night. They have got everything in the neighborhood here at the Texas State Fair. Kimberly, will you marry me? <laughs> I hope she's watching. I hope she's not stuck on the Ferris wheel. <laughs> well, let's get down and give an answer. Gundy on first and 10. Dives forward at the 44, head first. Tackled by Winfred Tubbs, 12 yards downfield. And it's a first down with 115 to play in the first half. Yeah, time now a factor. Cale Gundy knows that. He's trying to get the Oklahoma Sooners up to the line of scrimmage. No huddle. They went to no huddle last week, really to disrupt the rhythm of Iowa State. This week doing it really now here just to beat the clock. I want to mention that Oklahoma's going into the wind, so they would have to get very close for Scott Glenton, who has 50-yard range. Gundy downfield, intended for Juwan Penny at the 36-yard line, but it's incomplete. Good coverage by Carter. Great pressure up front. Stops the clock with a minute to play. There's a look at Scott Blanton, who's 6 of 8 on the season coming into this game. He's hit one today. He hit a 52-yarder last week against Rice. But last year... Pardon me, back in 1991, it was a miserable outing against Texas because he missed three field goals. Under a minute to play now. It's second down. They need 10 here, so they've got to be very careful not to throw an interception or get sacked. And that's what happens. 
What'd you say about getting sacked? Gundy downed by who else? Winfred Tubbs. Playing very much like the All-American that he is, a loss of 10. Last year, the defensive most viable player disappointed this year because he had the injury to his, his hands. Look at him here, just throws the blocker out of the way, sees Kale Cundin coming, never loses that leverage, and does everything full speed. 46 seconds to play. Kale Gundy last, ye last week breaking the total offense record in school history at Oklahoma. Looked like they were making Tubbs a cartoon character. I'm telling you, Kale Gundy is a real gunslinger. You don't believe me? Look at this. That's him. Take aim and fire, Kale. Oklahoma's career total offensive leader, 4,926 yards. Started as a freshman, always been poised, confident, and extremely competitive, and a pretty darn good shot. Didn't throw his first interception of the season until last week against Iowa State. Ended up throwing two on the day. Interesting career he's had. You know, he came out of high school, Parade High School All-American, Midwest City, Oklahoma. His brother, Mike, the all-time passing leader in the, uh, the conference out of uh, Oklahoma State University. And then Kale came in. He's shown flashes of brilliance, but at times has struggled. You see 49 touchdowns for Mike Gundy. Kale has 27. Mike throwing for almost 8,000 yards. Yeah, he is the all-time leader in the conference. Mike now an assistant coach at Oklahoma State as well. Back here we have 51 seconds to play in the first half, and Oklahoma leads 10 to 3. They face third down and 26. Defensively, this is a bad situation to play in if you're on the defense, because invariably, coach likes to put you in some kind of soft prevent to stop getting the first down. I just play regular and go after him. They've got to get to the 45 of Texas for the first down. They hand it off to Collier. And Collier is taller back at the 38. Nice play by Thomas Baskin. Texas stopping the clock. Signaling timeout. The tackle that time made by Joey Ellis, who's back in the game. Yeah, but it was Baskin who really made that play. He's the one that stopped. He made him reverse his direction. Makovic with a little strategy session on the sidelines. Now remember, Oklahoma has to punt to one of the most dangerous punt returners in the entire game of football, Mike Adams. We saw Adams burn Syracuse with a touchdown return on a punt. Syracuse was then ranked sixth in the country and had tremendous special team efforts, and Adams just ran right by him. He is special. His teammates call him the playmaker. Scott Blanton is going to be standing on his own 22-yard line. Now Adams wants to try to get a big return here, if for no other reason, to put Texas in great field position, wind at their back, try to at least get another field goal out of this, have to get down to the 35 to be in his range, Shreddy's field goal range. A low line drive returnable kick. Adams at the 18. Good downfield coverage by the special teams unit for the Sooners. A 44-yard punt by Blanton, and just four on the return to tackle by Corey Warren, the flanker. That's great coverage. Now Texas with just 32 seconds left, and no timeouts. Pretty well against it. Got to use the sidelines to stop the clock. First down and 10, Morenz, 10 of 19 today. Brown and Jackson lining up out of the eye. That's Jackson on the carry. Couple philosophies here, backed up on your own 20 with uh, 30, 20 seconds left now. Playing it rather conservative, just let the clock run out. Don't want to turn it over to Oklahoma down this deep. Makovic again, Tim shortening the game a little bit. Well, he's telling them, let's get this thing going. Or is he, no, he's saying, let the clock run. Yeah, that's what he did at the end of the first quarter. Shorten it down, don't give the ball back to Oklahoma. Let's go in just seven down. That's the end of the first half, and Oklahoma leads, leads the Red River War 10-3. to three.
The Sooners ranked 10th in the country and trying to hold the form. The Cotton Bowl as Oklahoma leads Texas by a score of 10 to 3 as we await the beginning of the third quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins down on the sidelines. Tim, the tone of this game really set early on a crucial fourth down situation by the Oklahoma defense. Absolutely. I think Texas has to be pleased with where it is right now. Take a look at the highlights. It was in the first quarter, moving the ball down in the red zone. Fourth down, Texas needing uh, two yards. Roderick Walker didn't get it. All right, so Oklahoma holds. They went for that first, didn't kick the field goal because it was into the wind. A little bit later, here's Gerald Moore. Option play. Look at Gundy. Unloaded quickly. Moore gets outside, breaks two tackles. Reed doesn't wrap him up. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Then, at the end of the first half, Texas with the opportunity to get on the scoreboard Shreddy with a 52-yard field goal. Got every bit of it. Ties his longest. There was no question about it. You think this game's not big? You think it doesn't mean much for Texas to be back in? Look at Shreddy. Yes, sir. We're in it. 10-3 ball game. The Longhorns, underdogs, keep hanging around, hanging around. They're in pretty good shape right now, Mark. Yeah, you get the feeling, Tim, they're not that far off from making a couple of big plays. Of course, Texas coming into the game with a record of 1-2-1. One, one. Oklahoma undefeated at 4-0 and, oh, and ranked number 10 in the country. But records aside, this is Oklahoma against Texas. Nothing else matters. Shreddy getting set for the kickoff, and Darius Johnson is back deep along with P.J. Mills for Oklahoma. is short and it's out of bounds at the 30 yard line of Oklahoma Let's take a look at the halftime statistics the time of possession relatively even one turnover for Oklahoma Tim. that didn't turn into a score though if you look at total yards just above that you'll see that Texas actually had more total yards than did Oklahoma and they're also passing the ball quite well is UT 88 passing yards rushing Oklahoma has 113 keep in mind now that Texas has been given up almost 500 yards rushing a game. Procedure, kicking team, as by rule, ball placed on a 35-yard line. I'd almost think about having them kick it again. They do have an option. They're kicking into the wind. You saw how short that other one was. Especially kicking into the wind. Four completions for Kale Gundy. That's it with one kick. You have to wonder how much that hip problem is bothering him at this point. Gundy hands it off, lots of room up the middle. James Allen on the first play of the third quarter. The Oklahoma offense means nothing but business down to the 42-yard line. A pickup of 21 yards for the freshman. Well, we told you about Texas defense giving up 496 yards a game. Boy, I tell you what, they're giving up big time here. They Chandler took Tubbs out. Once he did that and got into the secondary, there's your big gainer. Watch Chandler just cut off Tubbs. Here he is, 44, bang. Good block by Chandler. Open the gate. See you later. If I'm even, I'm leaving. Chandler. Nice block. Allen again. Down to the 42-yard line. Pick up of close to two. Gary Gibbs looking for his first win against Texas. And this is 50th game. Longhorns defensively have to maintain their composure. Do it work well for them in the first half. There's the guy right there, Coach Gibbs. He knows that he can run against this club if he just keeps pounding at it. Ball in the 42, second down and eight. And he's going to pass. Under pressure and down at the 48-yard line. The third sack of the day, but there's a flag down back at the 48. Robert Reed gets his second sack of the year. May have been a face mask, too, Tim. It's on Reed. Watch, watch Robert Reed. He gets his second sack of the year. Number 40 coming out of the left hand or the right hand of your screen. Reaches back and catches Kale's face mask. Incidental, so they'll just mark it off five. Look at him. Just beat the blocker, came in. Incidental clean. face mask on a defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down.
There's Russell Allen of Oklahoma on the sidelines with a knee brace on his left knee. Russell Allen was starting left defensive end. Obviously out of this game. We'll get more information to you. Passed along from Dean in just a minute. Second down and eight. Gundy, quick three-step drop, and now has to scramble a bit before he hits his tight end down at the 35. That's Ricky Brady. Brady, the team's leading receiver coming into this game. He had 14 catches for 221 yards. And a look at the offensive leaders in the first half for Oklahoma. We mentioned Gundy's statistics, just 4 of 11, one interception. I tell you, Gerald Allen really showed me something in that first half, a total of 51 yards rushing. I saw Brady just make that catch. You know, we talked about the food poisoning the players had at Oklahoma. Brady had it the worst. Now has 16 receptions in a year. Third down and short. Full house backfield. That's Chandler powering ahead for the first down. Chandler, a big load at 212 pounds. He's a sophomore. Tackled by Tugs. So they move the chains. This is a big drive for Oklahoma. Not only using up time off the clock, but also striking a blow to the psyche of Texas. Well, if they were to go up 17 to 3 here, Texas, it would take everything they had to get back in it. Texas will have the wind at their backs, though, for the fourth quarter if it comes down to that. First and 10 at the 32. Three wide receivers for the Sooners. A handoff to James Allen, who is tackled at the 28-yard line. And he's slow to get up. Ball was loose. Baskin came up with it, but the whistle had already blown. They go number 90, Thomas Baskin. Baskin, an All-American junior college player out of Riverside. Watch him try to strip it out. Here comes Allen. Bang, there's Baskin, number 90. Rakes that ball out. Whoop. He was already down. Second down and four. Allen having a productive afternoon. Warren in motion. Allen again. Down to the 22-yard line, and he'll have... Oh, he'll be close to the first down. Not going to give it to him just yet. I'll tell you, we've called his name a couple times, but Dwayne Chandler who is the fullback, the hammer guy. He is just laying some terrific blocks on Tubbs, number 44. He's the one opening those holes. He's attacking Tubbs. Which is a big task. Chandler out of Mississippi. He's the first Oklahoma running back to come from Mississippi since a guy named Marcus Dupree who could play a little football. He's a converted tailback from Aberdeen. Mississippi. Allen again. Skipping over one tackler down to the 18-yard line. And Chandler once again with another block on Tubbs. Looks like those tackling drills that you do, Tim, in practice. All right, watch Tubbs here. Let's go to the replay. We tell you Chandler's been taking him out. Here comes Tubbs, all everything linebacker. There's Chandler, just cuts him out of there. Oh, I love that guy. That's three times in a row now. I mean, he's saying, hey, big Tubbs, come on after me, buddy. <laughs> That's 212 pounds against 240. Second down and six. Gundy on the option, keeps it himself. Cale Gundy, touchdown! Now watch Gundy. All right, he reads, reads, stop it there. Boom, now there. Tubbs just runs out of the play. Touchdown. 
And the extra point is good by Blanton. Oklahoma starting to slip away a little bit from Texas. They lead by two converted touchdowns. the touchdown. Kale Gundy has to read Watkins the end and the linebacker read. Watch this. As soon as he sees them push to the outside, he's cutting it back in. Now, stop it right here. Here's the middle linebacker, Tubbs, but he overruns it. Gundy comes back in. Touchdown. This is tremendous read by the quarterback. Cuts all the way back against the pursuit for the score. Texas has faced options before. They faced Syracuse with the freeze option. That was just a poor play defensively. Blanton with the kick. And what's the movie on that flight? Hits the upright. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. Guys, Russell Allen is the only casualty of the ball game so far. He will not play in the second half. He has a sprained knee. Texas is healthy. Oklahoma is besides that. In the center locker room, not a lot of rah-rah from Gary Gibbs. He made adjustments. He said, we're going to execute and we're going to win the game. Defensive line coach Kevin Walthausen said we better get a better pass rush, and that's what Texas was saying on the other side in the other locker room. All right, Dean. Hey, you don't think that Gary Gibbs wants to win this game? I tell you what, for Gundy, you know that bad hip. That soreness goes away when you have a run like that. It does. First and ten for Texas. Time for them to respond. Lorenz comes back the other way with a screen to Phil Brown. And Brown is out to the 27-yard line, about two yards shy of the first down. A well-executed play that time. It was really set up well. I think if Brown had a stage to the outside, he might even have scored, but he cuts it back in. Watch, they fake the screen to the right, come back to the back screen. Here comes Brown. Now, if he stays to the outside here, he's got blockers. All he has to do is stay behind Elmore. There's Pinckney, and there's nobody else home. Bill Brown, a very elusive back, very versatile back. He led the team in receiving last year. 9.50 to play in the third quarter. Adams in motion. That's Jackson, and Jackson gets jacked back at the 27 by Tremaine Green. Oklahoma's been solid against the run all year. Very talented group of linebackers. Green being one of those, along with Freeman, Simpson, and Peters. Green, a real physical player. Studied as a game a lot, too. Big on film sessions. Third down and two for Texas. Takes in motion. Quick three-step drop, and it's complete to Pinckney, who bounces off two different defenders and plows his way forward. You see some of the strength right there on that 17-yard pickup. Makovic has to love it. 
He's a bit tumultuous times for a very talented receiver, Pinckney. He was suspended for throwing a water balloon in a water balloon fight. He was thrown out of practice for his attitude one day. He is a talented player, though, fastest player. And Morenz will love that if he can get him involved in the game right now. Tim Pinckney with four receptions, a total of 38 yards so far. First down and 10 at the 44 for the Longhorns. Morenz. Pinckney goes high and comes down with it. Boy, he took the elevator to the top floor. He also did it with one hand. He is 6'5", 234 pounds. He's got hands like meat cleavers, wears gloves for stickiness, and watch this. Watch the right hand. Just pull that bad boy out of the Whoa. air. First down. I said Morenz would love it if he could get him involved. He's got him involved. And if Pinckney starts believing like that, look out, because he has the talent when he believes he can do it. He might have a 46-inch sleeve, too. High School All-American, USA fabulous freshman. Second youngest of 12 children, so he understands depth charts. <laughs> and teamwork. <laughs> Roderick Walker on first down. Falls forward for about a one-yard gain. Tackled by Ricky Wren, 6'1-inch, 268-pound senior. Take a look at the offensive leaders for Texas. Morenz, 10 of 19 so far, a total of 88 yards. Playing, playing very well. The biggest thing on that ledger is zero under INT. He's starting to make better reads, something that he didn't do earlier in the season. Better reads and excellent decisions. I hope we didn't jinx him. <laughs> Second down and 10, we'll see. He's going to pass it. Hits Mike Adams, and Adams has got room to run. Mike Adams is going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Texas. We said Texas had to get Pickney and Adams more involved. They do here. They drag him underneath. The corner misses the tackle. That's Johnson in the secondary. You're not going to catch this guy. Adams has great speed, 4-3 speed. They call him the playmaker. He was voted freshman of the year. Leads Texas in all-purpose yards. He's big time. The thing that makes those receivers, Pinckney and Adams I'm talking about, so dangerous, Tim, as Shreddy converts the extra point, is that they run like running backs after they catch the ball. Run the inside receiver deep, bring him underneath. There's 42, Johnson falls off. Now watch him turn it on. Yes, sir, the burners are on. Tough body, soft hands, great speed. They had to score, get blown out of this game. They did, and look how Morenz responded on this drive. Four for four, 80 yards. That's big time. He has big playability, and it showed it on that drive. Ready with the kick down to the five-yard line. That's P.J. Mills. Mills swarmed to the 21, and the Texas team starting to pick it up. There's a look at the guy they call the playmaker. And he was a touchdown maker moments ago. CFA College Football on ABC Sports, brought to you by American Honda, who has been making quality cars in America for the past 10 years. And Domino's Pizza, where you can get our new crunchy, Thin crust pizza and always something for nothing. Well, that touchdown pass to Mike Adams, just the right medicine the doctor ordered for Texas. And now one half of the 75,000 people here dressed in burnt orange, a little bit excited. Gundy wants to get some back. And he finds Ricky Brady as tight end for a first down at the 39. Downstairs to Dean Blevins. In this game, Texas went into the wind. It's about 15 miles an hour uh, blowing behind the backs of Oklahoma. Texas goes into the wind with that drive. They will have the wind in the fourth quarter. We'll keep an eye on Oklahoma with a food poisoning problem in the fourth quarter. Okay, it's so, so far they've been okay because it's a cool day here in Dallas. The grass makes it cooler. They've given the kids B12 shots earlier in the week, electrolytes, a lot of fluid, but the fourth quarter is what the Oklahoma staff is concerned about. All right, Dean. Let me Good tell point. you, when that adrenaline starts flowing, they won't even know what state they're in. 
That's your own B12. Collier and Moore in the backfield. This is Moore dragged down at the 40 by Winfred Tubbs. Uh, it's a great play by Tubbs, too. He just went right by Collier, who was the lead blocker. One of the few times that Tubbs hasn't been hit by the fullback. Been moving Tubbs around. Watch him this time, the right hand of your screen. Watch 44. Here comes the block from Collier. Just throws him to the ground. Makes a nice play. Boy, he's some kind of linebacker. 11 tackles today for Tubbs. Not playing like a player that's been slowed down by that hand injury we referred to. Gundy taking a timeout, and we're going to throw it back to New York for an update. John? Mark, updating the Michigan-Michigan State game. The Spartans had a 17-0 lead, but Todd Collins, 20 yards to Derek Alexander. Nice catch in the end zone. It's now a 17-7 contest. Meanwhile, Cal and Washington, Dave Barr with a couple of touchdown passes there. 23-3, Cal has the lead. Mark, get it back to you, Oklahoma and Texas. Here it's 17 to 10. Oklahoma leading by a converted touchdown as Gundy talks things over with Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator. Following up with John said that Cal Arizona game now becomes huge. And a look at the play selection by the Sooners in the first quarter. Seven run and seven pass. All right, remember that's when the win was at their back. Since that time, it's changed though. Then going into the win, they ran the ball 13 times, passed only once, and that ball was picked off. You know, the Oklahoma rushes about 190 yards a game. So far, they have 165. It's interesting that last year, this Oklahoma team was a little bit pass-happy by their own admission. This season, though, a different story. They're much more balanced. Second down and nine. Three wide receivers for the Sooners. Play action by Gundy. Moore wide open out of the backfield. And the freshman continues to shine down to the 42-yard line before he's tackled by Robert Reed. He picked up 18 yards, though, and they moved the chains. We talk about the great job that Winford Tubbs does as a linebacker. This is a play where he didn't play it properly. He saw his keys, he got back into his area, but didn't pick up the receiver, and then overran the play and fell down. Now watch this, he reads pass. He reads his key, it's coming out to him. But he goes right, the pass comes left. Now he overruns, falls down, big game. First down and 10, ball to 42. That's Moore looking for room. Tiptoes his way down to the 38-yard line. Moore came into the game with 18 rushes for a total of 66 yards. Had a touchdown in the first half. Tackled by Thomas Baskin on that play. Texas defense really been plagued this year by injuries. Played havoc with their continuity all year. Clark, Reeves, Hayes, Rink, they've all played nicked up. Tubbs still is not right. They all have that hunt and confront mentality, seek and destroy. Tubbs makes the difference. He's just now starting to get healthy, but you can tell he's not all there yet. A lot of balance offensively for Oklahoma. Gundy doesn't know what to do back there. He goes down at the 41. Thomas Baskin nailing him. It's like in slow motion. He stayed back there seemingly forever. Had two offensive linemen holding Stoney Clark out. Stoney Clark's 320 pounds. Took two guys to hold him. Look there on the right hand of your screen. They got two guys standing there right here holding Stoney Clark. 320 pounds finally. Kale says, I'm getting out of here. And the pursuit tracks him down. And there's big old number 90. Thomas Baskin got there first. Gundy looked like he was doing a fire drill. <laughs> I said, hey, that guy's big. He's quick. Looks like he weighs 800 pounds. I'm getting out of here. Third down and long. Third and eight. Texas defense with four sacks this afternoon. Gundy's going to pass. Complete to Corey Warren, who falls forward at the 28-yard line. He has a first down, a 12-yard pickup. 
Gundy threw that with authority. They call him Deuce. Number two, Corey Warren. He started all four years, the most experienced. Look at him. Just got that leverage inside, made the catch. It's almost a K.O. Mary. I mean, he felt the pressure. He just unloaded this baby before he got hit. Great pass by Gundy. That's his first catch of the afternoon. Gundy, 8 of 15. Moore. Turns it north-south down to the 25. Baskin again on the tackle. Atlanta taking a two to one lead in that NLCS. A fantastic day for the Tomahawk Chop today. Both uh, Florida State and the Braves doing a good job winning. You're out of control. Very much so. <laughs> Second down and seven. No Tama chop, Tama chops here. Just a lot of crimson and cream and burnt orange. Warren again complete at the 22, working on Joey Ellis. Deuce, Corey Warren, taking some late licks. Says, hey, I'm all right. Brings up a big Good. third down play. Ellis back in the game. We saw him shaking up earlier top cover man in the secondary for Texas. Defensively now on third and short, down linemen have to really get across that line of scrimmage, make contact. Contained guys, defensive ends and outside linebackers have to be contained conscious, and the young secondary has to just lock on. Critical sequence here for the Texas defense. Their team trailing by seven. Collier and Moore lining up out of the eye. Motion on the interior line, and we'll have to see who it's against. I'll tell you this, Chuck Langston says it's against Texas. He started walking five yards down the field. Dead ball, offside, defense, five-yard penalty, first down. They gave him a free pass. No question about it, there's Stoney Clark, 93. Ball wasn't snapped, and he came across the neutral zone to make contact. Boy, make a mental error down there when you've got him third down and short. Will drive a coach crazy. This is a good drive by Oklahoma. A room service first down for the Sooners. Collier breaking it outside. Down to the seven-yard line. Tomorrow night, an invisible man poses real problems in Metropolis. You can watch it all develop on Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Back here with 1.30 to play in the third quarter, Texas trails Oklahoma by seven, but the Sooners have the ball on the Longhorn seven-yard line. Gary Gibbs looking on, trying to get his first win as head coach for Oklahoma. This is the 10th play of the drive. Oklahoma has just been pounding. Moore again pounding his way forward. Stopped at the one. He drops the ball, but he's ruled down. No, it was ruled a fumble, and the guy says it's Oklahoma ball. That's dangerous by Moore. That I thought like you did that he was down. His butt hits behind it before his hands do. But the guy signal fumbled. Watch this. Got some good blocks. Here comes Ellis. Yeah, see, he was down. Oh, yes. No question. They ruled it's a fumble. Oklahoma got it back, fortunately, because it was ruled a fumble. Should not have been. If anything, they gained yardage on it. Full house backfield. Allen, Collier, and Chandler gained about a yard on that fumble, and Gundy scores. And Gundy takes it himself. Hip pointer and all. So the Sooners come right back and score after the Texas score. Watch the offensive line fire out. Cowboy Robertson, Langston, Overton, Stamps. I mean, they just drive the burnt orange shirts right back into the end zone.
Dale Gundy's second touchdown of the half. Oklahoma's all-time leader in total offense. Attacking some more yards on that record. Blanton with the extra point to make it 24-10 Oklahoma. The Sooners in control in the third quarter. We'll be back. Watch these two guys right here. That's Corolo and Corbel. Watch them just pull this thing right through and take the big defensive guys and move them out of there. Corbel and Corolo do a great job. Gundy follows them right in. I'm telling you, that's terrific offensive play. That's a lot of red beans and rice and meat up front. Gundy with another touchdown to make it 24 to 10. Here's Blanton's kick. I think it went through the uprights this time. <laughs> Coming up on Monday Night Football, a rematch of one of the greatest comebacks of all time. Houston takes on Buffalo at 9 o'clock Eastern time, 8 Central. Jim Kelly and the Bills starting to round into form. Look at that last Oklahoma scoring drive. Using 11 plays, 79 yards, and almost seven minutes on the clock. Gundy, just like Morenz on Texas's drive, he was four for four. Shows you something, too, the way Oklahoma came back on that drive and answered the Texas touchdown. Let's see if Morenz has an answer to the answer for the answer. Nice cutback move that time. Jackson out to the 29. You know, if you're Texas, you have to be concerned. Oklahoma has more than 11 minutes has held the ball more than 11 minutes this quarter. Texas just 2.59. Nice cutback here by Curtis Jackson, too. Actually had Stamps coming back, went behind him, got to the outside after the pursuit had overrun it. Curtis Jackson. Texas, like Oklahoma, likes to use a lot of different backs, moving them in and out of the game, rotating them frequently. A lot of mileage out of them that way. Action Jackson had a super freshman year, 237 yards. Roderick Walker this time. Up to the 29-yard line, and that'll be the last play of the third quarter. As the song goes, I'm sooner born, I'm sooner bred, and when I die, I'm sooner dead. Right now, the Sooners, very much alive. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We're back in a very festive atmosphere here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. It's Oklahoma leading Texas by a score of 24 to 10 as we get set to begin the fourth quarter of play. I'm Mark Jones in the house along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins on an absolutely gorgeous Saturday afternoon. Texas with the ball, first down and 10. The flanker screen complete to Adams, but Adams ends up, well, losing yardage. 
Look at the statistics here in the third quarter, Tim. Rushing yards for Oklahoma overwhelming right now, having a great deal of success on the ground. I think the biggest thing thus far, though, is the time of possession. You see Oklahoma holds the advantage, but in that third quarter had the ball almost 12 minutes. When you hold the ball 12 out of 15 minutes, the other team doesn't have much of a shot at scoring. Elementary. Second down and 14 after that loss of four. Lorenz was brilliant on their last drive. He looked to Adams, but now comes back. He's picked off. John Anderson with the pick on Lorenz. And Oklahoma has tremendous field position. Shea Morenz, a redshirt freshman, has had problems this year making poor decisions. This definitely is one. It's a poorly thrown ball. Anderson, who's a junior, plays like a linebacker. Boy, I tell you what, that's a big pick. Well read, poor decision, bad throw. Tim, it looked as if he wanted to go downfield to Adams. And Hakes, his tight end, was the secondary receiver. Anderson calls the defensive signals, called his own number that time. Here's Allen. What a juke. Allen down to the 18-yard line, tackled by Chris Carter. Couldn't think of a more inopportune time for a turnover if you're Texas. Allen now 16 carries, 96 yards. Allen's done a good job. So is Gerald Moore. And you can never overstate the blocking job of Dwayne Chandler today, too. Now, when you think Allen had 316 yards coming into this game on 68 carries, and he has almost 100 today, that's big. Oklahoma, a very opportunistic team, converting on a lot of opposition turnovers. Here's Allen. Down to the 15-yard line. That's been one of the strengths of this Oklahoma team this year. They were waiting for Allen to explode and one of these games. He ran for over 6,000 career yards in high school, second best ever in the state of Oklahoma. He was recruited by everybody. I mean, Notre Dame, Alabama, everybody. Gibbs really feels that Allen, Tim, has that star-like quality to be one of the big-time backs in Oklahoma history. Third down and one. Allen approaching the century mark. Gundy trying to go over the top. Depends on the spot. He got it. They're going to mark it across at the 14. John Makovic watching this one slip away just a little bit. They're not dead. They only trail by 14. 12.45 to play in the fourth quarter. But a stop here is paramount for Makovic's troops. Well, the interception really plays big. You hate to say one play. That certainly is the biggest play thus far. And this Oklahoma team this season has displayed the killer instinct being able to put teams away. Check the record. They're 4-0 coming in. Gundy on the option to Allen. Couldn't square his shoulders, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 12 by Joey Ellis coming up from his corner spot. No, but that run's significant in the fact that he goes over 100 yards for the first time in his college career. Started all five games. Eighteen carries, 101 yards, averages six a carry. Boy, 68 carries coming into the game for only 316 yards. So I think the freshman has broken out. Yeah, but he ranks second among freshmen in the country in rushing yardage per game. Well, he's had five straight starts. Second down and seven. Play clock down to one again. Cale Gundy has to call timeout. That means Oklahoma has one left. They lead 24 to 10. We'll be right back. Our head coach, Barry Switzer, the guy that made the wishbone famous. Great success in the win column. Also has a son playing, Doug Switzer, is a backup quarterback. The option. Down to the seven-yard line, Gundy. 12.20 to play in the fourth quarter. Set up third down, the tackle by Thomas Baskin. 
talking about some of those great Oklahoma teams, Joe Washington, Billy Sims. Joe Washington with those silver shoes he used to wear. I got to know Joe pretty well in Washington. We had our knees up right on. We were roommates at the hospital, Sibley Hospital. Third down, three to go for the Sooners. Allen, the deep back, dotting the eye. Gundy takes it himself. And he has the first down at the three-yard line. Was that a design play, Tim? I think it was. Chris Rapp made the tackle. Let's take another look at this one. Quarterback draw, watch all the emotional stop. Freeze it right there. Hold that thing. Everybody's right here. Here's your lane for the first down. Gundy sees it and goes to it for the first. Oh, Lane, he had the whole highway. Quarterback draw worked his success, moved the change first and goal. Just outside the three. His mobility might be a little bit underrated. Moves around pretty well. Collier and Chandler and Allen in the full house backfield. Straight ahead, that's Chandler. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Oklahoma has now scored touchdowns four of the last five possessions. And I think you can put this one in the history books. Boy, just power blocking straight ahead. Tub stands him up. Stamps gets a good one. Brady comes over. Touchdown. There is justice in this world, Tim. You know, after the great blocking job that Chandler's done all afternoon, nice to see him get the carry for the touchdown. Blanton with the extra point to make it 31 to 10 for Oklahoma. So the Sooners ready and poised to snap this four game losing streak. It was a bet on the Texas OU game. You get exiled on the merry-go-round way, way up. That thing's stuck. <laughs> it's not moving. Here's the kickoff by Blanton. Adams lets it bounce to the 10. And nowhere to go, down to the 19-yard line. Downstairs, Dean Blevins. Dean, what's up? Well, guys, there's some uh, new talk about making this game a home-and-home -home series and not bringing it here to Dallas as it has been every year. Uh, that is presently being evaluated, but I want to show you something from the Oklahoma Daily. It's a school newspaper from Tuesday, October 14, 1947. It uh, ends the little editorial by saying, perhaps now is the time to take that Dallas contract in hand, wad it up carefully, and tell Cotton Bowl officials to shove it all the way. Personally, I like it in Dallas, and a lot of people do, but we'll see what happens. I think the guy that wrote that, Dean, he's now up on top of that Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Doing time. Time here, 11.05 to play in the fourth quarter. Morenz needs a miracle, and it's incomplete at the 38-yard line intended for Justin McLemore. John Anderson almost had his second pick of the day. Look at the scoring drive by Oklahoma. Seven plays, 25 yards, three minutes on the clock. And Anderson was the guy that precipitated it with that interception. Second down and 10 for Shane Lorenz and the Longhorns. Lorenz, a redshirt freshman, actually played in this game last year against Oklahoma in Texas's win. Backs are split. In came Mario Freeman to say hello. No, you've got to throw the ball here. You can't wait around anymore. You got Adams and Pinkney out there. You got to throw the ball to them. 10:45 left in the ball game. You're trailing 31 to 10. And I guess, in light of that, Tim, you can understand some of the frustrations of Lavelle Pinkney and Mike Adams throughout the course of the season. But again, the entire team has got to be a little disappointed. Reds out of the shotgun. Deep drop. Wide open at the 35, McLemore. And he has a first down at the 41-yard line. A pickup of 20 for Justin McLemore. Let's go, Shea. Start running. you got to pick up the pace here. you got to get him up and going. You're fighting the clock now. 
10-17 left. You can't be walking around like you have all day. You got to get them in the huddle and out up to the line of scrimmage. You got some points to make up. McLemore today, three receptions, a total of 54 yards, and an average of 18 per. Had a touchdown catch last week against Rice. First and 10, 10 5 to play in the game. Jackson trying to cut back. Runs backwards up to the 45. Renz hurrying up to the line of scrimmage. No, he's trying well, to get him in the huddle. Be. Trying to get him in the huddle. He's got to hurry up. He's got to get those signals from the side, get everybody in the huddle, and get him in and out. Time is critical. Look at this. This is amazing to me. You're acting like this is the first quarter you got all day. Ball in the 44, second and six. Renz going up top. Got it. wide out. Adams complete at the 10. It's marked at the 12, a 43-yard pickup for the guy they call the playmaker. Gain of 43, send him out on a post, just let him outrun the defender. This ball's well thrown, too, leads Adams perfectly. Boy, Van Malone was about four steps behind, just got outrun on the post pattern. But again, you've got to pick up the pace. You score here, pick it, you got to stop him. But you're 31 to 10, you got to get in and out of the huddle. Tim, the question begs, where's that been all day? Adams, six receptions, 106 yards. a roar from the Oklahoma fans at the south end of the stadium. Brent into the end zone. Adams touchdown. Well, they got it done. They started throwing. He beat Shankle on the coverage. When you're playing defense, you always know the number two receiver, the second one in, is the most dangerous. He's in the slot this time. All right, now watch him work to the outside. Pinckney comes inside. He goes outside. The ball again is well thrown. Adams adjusts on the run and makes the catch. It was, it was actually behind him just a touch. He had to adjust, but he does that well. When you've got talent, like Pinckney and Adams, you've got to go to him. They're fighting the clock now, 31-16. to 16. They've got to keep everything up-tempo. Talent, the big equalizer there. Sharetti with the extra point. 8.52 to play in the fourth quarter. You know why the inside receiver is always the most dangerous? He has the most area to work with. Here he comes to the corner. Bingo. Texas trailing by 14 points with 8.52 to play. Tim, do you go for the onside kick or I not? Think, I think most coaches would look at this and see almost nine minutes and say, kick it deep and hold them. Personally, I would go for the onside kick, but then again, I'm not a coach. I'd really go aggressively after this being down 31 to 17. I'd try everything I had to get the ball back. Especially when your defense has been as porous as Texas has been. Well, they kick it deep. 
Rolls down to the eight. Darius Johnson breaks it outside and out to the 46-yard line. Onside kick looks pretty good to me right now. Got back almost to where the ball would have been on an onside kick. Sure. 37-yard return that time by Johnson. Next Saturday at 12 noon, it's the first of two on ABC. Michigan State against Penn State for the very first time. Pardon me, Michigan against Penn State. Or North Carolina against Georgia Tech. And then regional action after that. Tennessee takes on Alabama. Colorado takes on Oklahoma. Check the local listings for the game in your area, plus the pay-per-view games available. 8.43 to play. Oklahoma leads by 14. Gundy gives it to the fullback on the option. He plows straight ahead. I had Michigan State on the mind, and that's why. They lead by 10 points in the fourth quarter. Six, Six minutes left in that game, Mark. Yeah, upset's nothing new when Michigan State hosts Michigan. It's happened more than a few times. There's a former Big Ten coach. He knows what those are like. Defensively right now, you've got to be thinking about getting this ball back. I mean, stripping the ball, raking the ball, grabbing the ball, anything you could possibly do. Look, he almost got it, too. Brackens, Tony Brackens. Give it to the fullback again. That's Collier. Muscling his way down to the 37-yard line. Robert Reed made the tackle. Gain of 12. Clock continues to move once they reset the chains. You have to be impressed with the job that this Oklahoma def offense, and defense for that matter, but especially the offense has done today. They've mixed it up well. Give Watson Brown a lot of credit. Gary Gibbs a lot of credit. Merv Johnson's now the assistant coach, but I tell you, I think he's one of the best offensive line coaches in the country. Offensive line has played very well today, too, for Oklahoma. We talked about Watson Brown when he was with Mississippi State. They defeated Texas in 1991 and 92. He's the good luck charm, and here's Collier. Another first down by Collier, down to the 23, tackled by Van Malone. A pickup of 13 that time. You know what Watson Brown has done for this Oklahoma team? He's given it balance. Stretches the field, gives it balance. Coming into this game, Oklahoma averaged 188 yards passing a game and 190 yards rushing per game. That's almost identical. That is excellent balance, and he does it by stretching the field. Nicely done, Watson. Yeah, that in light of the fact that Brown has had to cut down, as Dean mentioned from the sidelines, on some of his offensive package today because of Cale Gundy's injury. 7.05 to go. Corey Warren in motion. And handed off to the freshman, Gerald Moore, who's tackled behind the line of scrimmage by Chris Rapp. Clock continues to move. See, Makovic has to start thinking about using a few of his timeouts. He's got all three remaining. Don't want to take him home with you. Texas came into the game with a record of 1-2-1. One, and one. Next week, John Makovic's team takes on SMU. Even though they face a situation here where they could lose, all is not lost in the big picture because they still have their conference schedule and they can still qualify for the Cotton Bowl. That, of course, if uh, Texas a &M has anything to say about it, let's say something differently. Collier down to the 26. Are they calling it a fumble or not? They said that Collier was down. Well, I tell you what, Chris Carter's not believing that. The free safety right there, number 16. Watch the end of this play and see if he was down. Watch the strip. Everybody coming in. There's Brackens takes it away. That ball was out when he, that ball looked like it was out before he went down. <laughs> Brackens pulled it out. Brackens would be murder in the New York City subway system, wouldn't he? Picking up pockets. Only thing I can think of is the whistle may have blown. Third and 11 now for the Sooners. Wing set, two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. And we have whistles on the field. Play clock has expired. It's at zero now with zero before the snap. 
They'll move him back. See if he folds his arms. Yes, sir. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. We were talking about Texas's schedule the remainder of the season for them after this game. And here's a look at it. SMU next week play at the Alamo Dome, and then Texas Tech at Houston, TCU, Baylor, and then the big finale. Get that bonfire going as they take on Texas A&M. You realize that penalty for delay a game right here on Oklahoma is only the second penalty on the Sooners today. Good discipline by the Sooners. 5-16 left in the fourth quarter. Third and long, Gundy up top, complete to Albert Hall. A huge conversion for the Sooners on third and long. A pickup of 20 yards and a first down. Comfortable lead gives you more confidence, but protection gives you time. And he had protection, waited and fired a perfect strike to Albert Hall. Hall's got 4-5 uh, speed, 31-inch vertical G, uh, jump. I think we saw them both there. Could be the most dangerous receiver they have after he catches the ball. He's a good runner, too, but nice pattern and good catch. Move the chains. Those Oklahoma receivers all cut out of the same mold, about 5'11". Good wheels. He has two catches now, 43 yards. That's not a bad average. Give up the middle to the fullback, Collier. Makes his way down to the six-yard line before being stopped by Chris Carter. Clock running with 4.55 to play. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brandt and Dean Blevins here at the Cotton Bowl. Oklahoma leading by a pair of touchdowns with 4.40 to go. Sooners looking to improve their record to 5-0. Oklahoma has used four minutes of the clock on this drive alone. Three. Clock running with 4.13 to play. Tackle that time made by Chris Rapp. Well, we talked about the food poisoning that the Oklahoma players suffered. You know, in 1918, there was no game because of World War I and an influenza epidemic. Third and short for Oklahoma. Boy, the Sooners have played well today. They're ready to push the record to 5-0. They've melted the clock here. On the option, Gundy, touchdown. His, his third, third of this half. He takes his hat off and says, people, how you like me now? He's pretty hip. <laughs> hey, don't tell me about a sore hip. Kale again on the option. Saw it open up and just took the opportunity to cut it up. Watch this. Read the defensive end. See that he's already outside. Three touchdowns this half. He went parallel for the last two yards. An impressive drive by Kale Gundy leading the Oklahoma Sooners into their first win in five years against Texas. 3-2 to play. I'm Mark Jones along with Tim Brent and Dean Blevins. Yeah, big time house and a big crowd here today at the Cotton Bowl. They've seen an entertaining game, especially if you're an Oklahoma fan, Tim. Yeah, they really have. Oklahoma's played well. They've used the clock. Gundy's been sensational, especially in this half. Here's Adams. At the one. Adams right down Main Street. Out to the 36-yard line. Pretty busy day in college football. We saw the big win by Florida State over Miami earlier on ABC. And look at the rest of the top 25 later tonight. The other team in Florida, the Gators, taking on LSU. Here's a look at how the top 10 fared this afternoon. Big win for Florida State over Miami. They've been waiting for that for years. Dominated today. Alabama was idle. We'll see them next week against Tennessee, which is ranked 11th and had a big win today. Huge game in Birmingham next week. Three 
26 to play for Shamerens and the Longhorns. So McLemore completed the 50 in a first down. Let's go, get him up. Look at Kale Gundy, what a half he's had. If you weren't with us at the beginning, he suffered an injury in practice on Tuesday. Really had no significant practice time up until the start of this game the rest of the week. They didn't even know if he would play. He did. And if you're Oklahoma, you're not eating any sandwiches with mayonnaise on the way home. Morenz fumbles it, picks it up, and runs out of bounds at the 47. You know they're going to watch what they eat on the way home today. Gary Gibbs not letting up any. You don't think that he's feeling a huge amount of relief right now, getting his first win against Texas? We have 308 to play. Hey, Gundy may want to give an MVP award to his trainer. The guy who got that hip ready. Inside handoff to Phil Brown. Bounces off a couple of defenders and is down to the 48. Always fun to come to Dallas. I hope they don't move this game. People here love this every year. Matter of fact, went out and saw Mel Holland last night over Jack's Restaurant over in Addison. Had a good time there. Mickey Mantle was there. Everybody comes to town for the Oklahoma-Texas game. Professionally, you know, this is one of the highlights for me. A lot of history. This game is rife with tradition. Moran's going downfield, and he's almost picked off again. He had a couple of receivers in the same neighborhood, but Malin Wesley was the one that had the best shot at it. Wesley's saying to himself right now, how did I miss that thing? He's got one pick this year, one interception. That was in his hands. I think he looked up to read the headlines. He looked like Wesley Snipes trying to catch that. Lorenz this half, 9 of 12, 165 yards. Fourth down. Pinckney complete right at the first down marker of the 38-yard line, a 10-yard pickup. The big guy extending himself on that play. He's an NFL receiver. He'll find himself playing on Sundays before his career is over. I don't know why they don't go to him more. I know he's been upset about that. He was, his attitude was questioned. He left practice early one day when the coach sent him in because of his attitude. That's a nice catch for Morenz. It's a nice throw, and it takes a pretty good lick afterwards, too. David Campbell lowering the ball. Two and a quarter to go. Morenz looking up top again for Pinckney. And he was double covered. Incomplete. Shankle and Bush back deep for Oklahoma. There's a look at Gary Gibbs. He was Oklahoma's defensive coordinator before taking over for Barry Switzer's that top job in 89. He created a defense built on speed. The Sooners are still feeling the effects of the two-year probation. They came into the season with only 72 players on scholarship, so a lot of freshmen do play, but he has turned this program around. Tremendous amount of obstacles facing him when he first took over. Moran picked up and dropped. Wesley again. Wesley got punished, too. Wesley got punished. He'll get fined by a kangaroo court of his own players after oh, this game. No doubt. Number one, I don't know how he misses this because he times it perfectly, steps in front, he's got the ball. Now watch this. He gets nailed. Bang! <laughs> oh, Brocker Meyer says, how do you do? Oh, uh, Wesley was preparing his quotes for the touchdown. <laughs> no, I've got to tell you, I've done that myself. I had the ball in my hands. It looks like it's a touchdown. You just drop it. You can't figure out how you do it. But I've never run into big linemen like that afterwards. That's why they play defense. 
Lorenz completes down to the 32, but there's a flag on the play. Jackson yes. is tackled at the 32. I think they're going to call, call this one back for holding against Texas, I believe. 66. Holding offense. You know, normally in college ball, they don't tell you the lineman that's, that's holding. Here, you can hear his mic leak, and it was big 66, John Elmore. Tim, we talked about Gibbs' situation at Oklahoma. Makovic, meanwhile, in contrast, at Texas, you know, the people there are looking for them to make a bit of a move and some kind of improvement, significant improvement this season. What's been significant is his success in recruiting. He's had some great recruiting classes that have come in. And keep in mind, Pinkney's just a sophomore. Adams is a sophomore. Moranz is a redshirt freshman. His running backs are all sophomores. So he's got a tremendous nucleus and a very young football team. We're approaching two minutes to play. Lorenz out of the shotgun, high snap. Eluding trouble. And run out of bounds and a late flag at the 49. get hit and now we see some of the ill will between Oklahoma and Texas now John Anderson it wasn't much of a hit I'll tell you that because I think Anderson tried to stay off of him did hit him out of bounds dead ball personal foul defense 15 yard penalty first down watch Moran's runs out of bounds then you'll see 39 Anderson come right here tries to stay away almost almost does avoid it but he actually was trying to avoid him and they threw the flag yeah I thought he tried to let up there oh he did there's no question Watch how he actually turns his body and raises his hands to stay out of the way. Here he comes, top of the screen. Now watch. He's already turning his back and raises his hands. Let's he put was it trying to avoid let's the put, hit. Let's put it this way. If he wanted to hit him, he could have hit him a lot harder than that. One forty-five to play in the game. Legs down, Lorenz down as well. And his arm was in the forward motion, so it's an incomplete pass. But there is a flag down at 36. Now Lorenz starting to get roughed up just a little bit too much for his liking. Offside, defense. Offsides against Oklahoma. They say this is not a fumble. His arm was going forward. And that's a good call. Been a few stars this afternoon on the field, but the Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Cale Gundy, who was 10 of 17, 114 yards, 22 yards rushing, and three touchdowns for Oklahoma, and Winford Tubbs from Texas with 14 tackles and one quarterback sack. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship achievements and to assist those in financial need. Inside handoff to Brown. And he's tackled at the 30 by Mario Freeman. Got to use some timeouts if you Texas. You don't want to just tank. You want to... There it is. Call a timeout. Stop it with 129 left. Think about throwing one or two into the end zone. Before this is over. Well, coming up after the game, the thrifty post game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That, of course, with time permitting. Next week, the Sooners face the Colorado Buffaloes. And Tim, this game here is always dangerous because it's such an emotional drain. You have to be careful the following week. Well, especially in Oklahoma's case, it seems like Oklahoma, every time it loses, the rest of the season falls apart. Gary Gibbs came into this game 0-4 for Texas. His team struggled each year after that. But you see what they have in front of them. Well, they've got Colorado coming up. That's October 16th. And then Nebraska, huge game, November 26th. Well, Gary Gibbs won't have to listen to his critics in Norman anymore when it comes to losing to Texas. 
Oklahoma, one of the outstanding programs in college football with 27 consecutive winning seasons. And I think that's why Gary Gibbs deserves so much credit. I mean, he's taken this, here he is in his fifth year, he's taken this program out of some of its toughest times and brought it back to prominence. And he's had two consecutive good recruiting years. So they have a lot of talent. Flags down. Bustamani, that time the, uh, the tackle was backpedaling before the snap. We talked about the Oklahoma success. Dead ball, false start, offense. Over the last five years, they rank number four on the winning list. Following Miami, Nebraska, and Florida State. Michigan at number five. And at last word, Michigan was trailing Michigan State. I'd smile too, Gary. Congratulations. Oklahoma going to 5-0. and oh. Here's Donnie Duncan next to him, the athletic director. Lorenz overthrowing Lavelle Pickney at the 25. Pickney had a big first week of the season with six receptions, 189 yards against Colorado, but since that time hasn't been as productive. One twenty-five remaining in the ball game. Texas still time trying to generate some points. Third down and ten for the Longhorns. Renz for Pinckney and intercepted by Larry Bush. Bush has some blockers. Gone. And Bush is gone. One man to beat. And he's tackled at the eight, but there's a flag back at the 36-yard line. It's going to be called against Joe Correa for using his head on the quarterback. I mean, he just laid out Morenz, and Morenz showed me something. He got off the turf and went and actually saved the touchdown. He made a great hit on Bush. Morenz ran all the way across the field some 65, 70 yards to make the tackle. Boy, what a hit Morenz took right after he laid that ball out there. Pushing the back. Here, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. All right, so that's the penalty. Let's go back and look at the hit. Correa puts... Well, we'll see the interception. Bush found a lot of blockers there, too. Well, as soon as he yelled fire, ball, ball, everybody jumped in front of him. He's out of bounds. Looks like on the on the sideline. Still no call. And then here comes Morenz to knock him out of bounds. And that is a great effort because watch the hit Morenz takes right there. The Ooh. helmet to the face by Correa. Now he sees the pick, gets up and makes his way all the way over to knock Bush out of bounds. That's big time. <laughs> that is something. What a lick he took. He could have easily tanked it after a hit like that and waited, but he didn't. This is after the hit. Watch this. After the hit by Korea. Sees the interception. Now watch him. Good Takes speed. a great angle to make the hit and knock him out of bounds. That's a great effort by Shea Morenz. Good speed. Register a tackle on the stat sheet. Got a new quarterback in for Oklahoma. We talked about Michigan State taking on Michigan. Well, it's final now. The Spartans have upset the Wolverines 17 to 7. Terrence Brown, number three, the freshman who has come in now at quarterback. Very quick young quarterback. He's got 4-4 four, four speed. Really hadn't taken too many snaps. Took a lot this week when Kale Gundy went out. Doesn't have a great arm. He's more of an option type player, but he's got terrific speed. 23 seconds to go. He hands it off to Collier. These guys want some more. 
Collier out to the 46. Well, it's been a long time for him against the Longhorns. Extremely long, Tim. They want to get everything they can out of it. Sounds like about 35,000 happy people here this afternoon. And Gary Gibbs gets the shower. I don't understand why all the players are. I look at the clock. They still have time remaining. Now they let it run. Officials trying to get them off. Now they say, heck with it. That's it. Gary Gibbs, you deserve it. After four consecutive losses, the head coach of the Sooners finally notches his first win against their arch rivals from across the Red River. Ian Makovic shaking hands, exchanging pleasantries. The final score, the Oklahoma Sooners improving to 5-0. Texas falling to 1-3-1. That's it from the Cotton Bowl.